Okay, uh, so we finished up the uh, our week, you know, with the red zone day today. I thought it was good. We call it Fast Friday. You know, guys are in shells, uh, mostly red zone, gold zone. That was good. Um, the guys were focused in on their improvements uh, this week, and, and we saw improvement during practice. So we're excited about this competition coming up on Sunday and hope to see the improvements uh, in the game. And uh, the guys have been mindful of that and been working on it during the drills and, and all week in practice. So we're certainly excited about that. And uh, the Houston Texans are coming into town, and we're excited about getting uh, a great, great competition uh, uh, going there on Sunday. So I'm open to questions. And Ky Kyler Gordon had, a game, I think, a game that rookies are going to have in the NFL, good and bad, whatever, against the Packers. How did you evaluate that, especially considering his rookie status and what do you, what, what needs to be better this, this time? Yeah, around? you know, with with any player, and, and of course with rookies, that does happen. You know, you have games like that, and uh, sometimes game, you know, guys have up games and down games, and and uh, for him, it's just about the fundamentals of the game. You know, him understanding the speed of the game, him understanding, you know what works for him during the course of a game on how to cover guys, um, how to set force, how to tackle, how to do the basics and rudiments of the game at this level. You know, and I think a lot of times uh, it's a, it is a step up for the rookies, you know, uh, playing in the pro game. So it takes some time. But, you know, he's certainly talented enough and, and uh, you know, you know uh, mentally tough enough uh, to get that done. He wants to improve. So with Gordon, were the tough plays what you would consider rookie mistakes? No, I would just say it's just you know f basic fundamentals that he can clean up on. You know that we looked at in detail. Uh, it could be from footwork to the fundamental tackling to uh, a lot of things. And I think it's uh, we detail them out for him, and he's excited about putting those into practice in the game. Do you expect Roquan to play? Roquan is right now he's questionable, and uh, you know and you know what that is. I think that's fifty one percent. So we're we're excited that uh, he's there at that point. You know. <clears throat> Through the course of the week, and uh, we'll have to see if, uh, if he's going to be up or down. Does he still have games that he would need to in the next he's, yeah, he's working towards the game, and we're, we're, we're hopeful that he'll be there. And was, uh, was Jalen's in injury in practice? Yes, it was. Okay. Yep. And same with Matt Adams, is that a similar situation? Yes. Mm -hmm. But real quick, was that just coming off the game? That just it was, his was coming off the game, yes, sir. Yep. And, and as we all know, Roquan's in a, in a contract year. Did, does he have say? In whether he plays, I mean, can he make a business decision to save himself uh, if it's questionable? No, I mean, I, I think that Roquan's a pro, and, and, and when he's ready to play, he's going to play. You know, and uh, he's, he's always been that way, and he loves the game of football. So, you know, if he's ready, he'll be ready. So, Matt, how would you assess Travis Gibson's play through two games so far? Good. Yeah, I thought he's played well. Obviously, last, you know, had those splash plays last week, um, and really, he had just had better get off. You know, his, his takeoff was better. He really, uh, you know, keyed the ball and had had a good, uh, you know, snap count awareness, and and uh, he was good. And uh, he had a couple of nice strong. He had a powerful move the one time, which created the hold, and then also fell back into one um, and staying alive on the sack. So we thought uh, he's been playing really well. He had a good camp too. You know, he's one of the guys that went through camp. I went through the whole thing and was was tough. You know, and mentally tough through that, and and we're excited where he is. Anything he has to do to get more snaps in the game? I know him and Al Quindi Muhammad played that exact same side. Is there anything he has to do to maybe earn that trust to get? Yeah, more? I mean, you know, the more production you get, the more the more plays you get. You know, so his 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 count will be up hopefully a little bit. Uh, this this you know it all depends on rotation. You know, when the guys go and they actually help each other out, they they are rotating inside the series. Uh, they help each other out. You know, and he might go four or five plays in a row and then go out and then. Me, you know, Mo would come in, and so they're always working together on that. What's your perspective when you're facing Lovey Smith with a similar defense? How do you look at that? Well, I think it's helpful. You know, when you're facing a similar defense, you know, something that you have faced in camp and something that you have faced, you know, that you're familiar with, both offense and defense, you know, so I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's better. You know, it's not as many adjustments uh, during the course of the week. Who has an advantage? Who has an advantage? Um, you know, we'll see on Sunday. Yeah, we'll see on Sunday. How, how important, Matt, is it to to stay patient? You know, they've allowed just nine points through the first three quarters of both games, and then kind of falling apart in the fourth quarter. How important is the offense to stay patient if that scenario plays out again? Yeah, I think that's you know, offensively, you always have to have that. You know, stay with what's what, what you're doing, your your game plan. Uh, just you know, and keep executing. You know, our big message to the team this week was really just all eleven on the same page and execution. And that's what we want to do as a football team, one play at a time. 
And I know that sounds rudimentary, but it's, that's what it is. You know, we, if we have 11 guys executing on one play every single play, we're going we're gonna to be, you know, in a successful mode for that play. And that's all we're trying to do. And uh, that's what we're doing for offense, too. It's okay. We've seen Adams serve as Roquan's backup in nickel. Who's the next man up? Can't go. Yeah, you know we're looking at all combinations because when you have, if you were to have two guys down, you know that's obviously in pro football that's not that's always uh, not good, you know. So we'll have to we're working through that right now, but uh, we have all combinations up. I know you liked what you saw out of Sanborn so far. Do you think he would be ready if if needed? Yeah, I think Sanborn is ready. I really do. I think he's he's excited to get going, and uh, you know if he gets his chance to play, you know, in the games in terms of playing linebacker. Um, I think he's ready to do that, and he's had a good week of practice too. Matt, how has the process of troubleshooting the passing game gone this week, and does maybe facing a similar defense kind of come at a good time for you guys? No, I think it, I think it's been good. You know, in terms of like us looking at you know how we're going to distribute the ball, and uh, you know how we're going to get the skill, the, the you know the the ball to give them to run with it, you know, or intermediate pass, or taking the ball down the field, and uh, we're going to our passing game is going to feature all three levels, and. Uh, and we're going to feature a lot of guys, you know, and that's our hope that we do that. And uh, that's what the game plan has been all week, you know, yeah. so it's been good. Yeah, with regard to that, you, when you were asked about the 11 passes, you said we have to have more balance. Luke didn't seem to have as big an issue with that when you include the sacks sure. and, running, and passing plays that turn into runs because it's 27-11 on paper, but to, in his mind it could, could have been 21-19 or whatever. So right. what, what is the definition of balance in your mind? Is it the play well, actually run? Or? Balance to me, good balance is always about, you know, what it takes to win the game. You know, so if it takes to run the ball to, to run the clock out, that's great. If it takes to, if we're down, you got to pass the ball, you know, uh, and you're out of possessions and you got to pass it more. So I think it's that's what it's mostly about, is about winning the football game. But uh, balance to me is just having good run pass balance. You know, I'm not going to say it's 50 50. It's not always that. It's usually about 60 40, whatever that number is. But it's to keep the defense off balance. And that's what you want to do with your offense. But and go ahead. Statistically, is it the number of, passes thrown or is the number of run plays called versus pass plays? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that was Luke's argument. That, and I'm just wondering yeah. if you – because he wouldn't even consider it. And it didn't sound like he even considered it an imbalance, and, and you did. Okay. Well, I didn't really consider it an imbalance. I said we did what we – you know, we were running the ball so well that we stayed with the run. So I never really called it imbalance. I said we're always searching for balance in the offense. The guys that have been ruled out, are any of them IR candidates? I'm sorry? The three guys who ruled out. Uh, I would have to talk to the medical staff about that. Thank you. A, a housekeeping question. We saw a, a couple of guys who were listed as not practicing. We saw them stretch. How do you, how do you uh, classify guys who stretch but then don't participate? Are they they're non-participants? Um, it's determined by reps in practice. Okay. Yep. Yep.